Hey everyone, in this anatomy lesson, I'm gonna cover the clavicle and the scapula bones. Now these bones make up part of the appendicular skeleton and together they form the pectoral girdle, also called the shoulder girdle, which attaches the upper arm to the axial skeleton. The clavicle bone, also called collarbone, is a small curved bone that sits horizontally on each side of the superior thorax. It attaches to the scapula laterally at the acromioclavicular joint and the sternum or breastbone medially at the sternoclavicular joint. Anatomists classify the clavicle as a long bone and it gets its name from a Latin word that means small key. And this bone is an important landmark when performing healthcare assessments. For example, the midclavicular line is an imaginary line that runs down the body from the middle of the clavicle bone and it's used to determine the location of the apical pulse as well as the two vertical lines that make up the nine abdominal regions. The clavicle bone is also a common fracture point for athletes. And looking at the right clavicle, you'll notice that the acromial end is at the lateral side, which is the side near the arm, and it has a flattened appearance. And the facet at the acromial end is going to articulate with the acromion of the scapula, forming the acromioclavicular joint a plane joint that allows gliding movements. Next, you'll notice the trapezoid line right here, which is a ridge that allows for the attachment of the trapezoid ligament. We also have the conoid tubercle, and the word conoid comes from a Greek word that means cone shape, and this allows for the attachment of the conoid ligament. Toward the medial end of the clavicle, we have an impression called the impression for the costoclavicular ligament. Now the prefix costo refers to the ribs, and just as the name suggests, this impression allows for the attachment of the costoclavicular ligament, which attaches the clavicle bone to the cartilage of the first rib. On the medial side of the clavicle, we have the sternal end. And remember, medial means toward the midline of the body, and the sternum, of course, is the breastbone. And this part of the clavicle is going to articulate with the manubrium of the sternum. The scapula bone, also called the shoulder blade, is a triangle-shaped bone on the posterior side of the body, which makes up the posterior part of the pectoral girdle. Now, the magic number for this bone is three because it has three depressions, three borders, and three angles, which we'll look at in just a moment. Now, despite having a few irregular structures on the scapula, anatomists classify this bone as a flat bone. And you'll notice that the scapula does articulate with the humerus bone in the arm as well as the clavicle, but it does not articulate with the ribs. And when listening to lung sounds on the posterior side of the body, you'll want to avoid the shoulder blades as Nurse Sarah demonstrated in our video on lung sounds. Now, as you look at the anterior or front side of the scapula, you'll notice a small hook-like structure that extends out and bends laterally like a hook and that is the coracoid process. And the word coracoid comes from a Greek word that means a raven-like hooked beak. And this allows for the attachment of muscles such as the short head of the biceps brachii, the pectoralis minor, and the coracobrachialis, as well as several ligaments. Now, as you look to the lateral part of the scapula, you'll notice there is a rounded depression closer to the top portion called the glenoid cavity. And this cavity again forms a ball and socket joint with the head of the humerus called the glenohumeral joint. Above and below the glenoid cavity, there are two little bumps called tubercles. The one above the glenoid cavity is the supraglenoid tubercle. And the prefix supra means above. And this allows for the attachment of the long head of the biceps brachii. And that little tubercle below the glenoid cavity is the infra glenoid tubercle, and it allows for the attachment of the long head of the triceps brachii. And again, the prefix infra means below. And then finally, on the front side of the scapula, there is a minor depression called the subscapular fossa. And what this depression does is it allows the subscapularis muscle to attach here. And the subscapular fossa is the only fossa on the anterior side, but it's one of three fossae on the scapula. Next, you'll notice that there are three angles on the scapula bone. The glenoid cavity, which we covered before, is located at the scapula's lateral angle, also called the head of the scapula, 
which is the thicker part of the bone. At the inferior portion or bottom of the scapula bone, we see the inferior angle. Again, superior means toward the top or head of a structure, and inferior means away from the head or toward the bottom of a structure. And this inferior angle allows for the attachment of the teres major muscle at the dorsal or posterior side. And then finally, we have the superior angle, which is a small triangular projection that is formed at the junction of the superior border and the medial border. And this allows fibers from the levator scapuli to attach. Now let's cover the three borders on the scapula bone. And these will be easy to remember if you can remember your directional terms. First, we have the superior border. And superior starts with an S, and that's gonna be helpful in remembering the two main characteristics of this border. It's the sharpest and the shortest. And it's located at the top of the scapula and allows for the attachment of the omohyoid muscle. Now on the superior border, you'll notice the suprascapular notch. And as I said before in my videos, all these little notches and bumps on these bones are here for a reason. And this notch allows the suprascapular nerve to run through there. Next, we have the medial border, which is the longest border of the scapula. And it's located toward the midline of the body where your vertebrae are. And it includes the portion of the scapula between the inferior and superior angles. And this allows for the attachment of muscles such as the serratus anterior, levator scapuli, rhomboid major, and rhomboid minor muscles. And then finally, we have the lateral border, and it's always gonna be on the same side of the scapula as the glenoid cavity. And this is the thickest of the three borders. And you'll find this between the inferior angle and the lower margin of the glenoid cavity. And this border allows for the attachment of muscles such as the subscapularis and the teres major. Now, as we look at the back or the posterior view of the scapula, you'll notice this bony ridge that extends out called the spine. And this is always easy to remember that it's on the back because where's your backbone? Your backbone's on your back and the spine of the scapula is always gonna be on the back or posterior side. And this projection allows for the attachment of the trapezius and deltoid muscles. Now the lateral part of this spine which sticks out is called the acromion of the scapula. And in the Greek, that word just means highest shoulder. And this bony process articulates or forms a joint with the acromial end of the clavicle forming that acromioclavicular joint, which again is a plane joint that allows that gliding movement. And then finally, we have these two depressions called fossae. We have the supraspinous fossa, and this is a depression above the spine of the scapula, and that's what the name literally means. Supra means above or over. Spinous refers to the spine. And then fossa, again, just means depression. And this allows for the attachment of the supraspinatus muscle. And then below the spine, we have another depression, which is called the infraspinous fossa. Again, the prefix infra means below. So the directional terms and prefixes, if you can get those down, it's gonna help you out a lot. And the infraspinatus muscle originates in the infraspinous fossa. Okay, so that wraps up this video over the bones that make up the pectoral girdle. Now you can go to our website and take a free quiz to test your knowledge over this by clicking the link in the description or comment below. In addition, we have a whole playlist of anatomy and physiology videos. You might want to check those out to help you with your studies. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe.